Let's solve a coffin problem which is designed to be hard but with elementary solutions. So the problem states that we have to show that the sine of 10 degrees is an irrational number. To approach this problem, we need two things. The first thing is the so-called rational root theorem, where it states that if x is equal to p over q, where p, q are relatively prime, and it is also a rational root of the following polynomial, which is a n times by x to the power of n, plus a n minus 1, x to the power of n minus 1, all the way down to a 0 is equal to 0. And the polynomial is a polynomial with integer coefficients, where a i is in the set of integers, and a 0, a n not equal to 0, then we have that p is an integer factor of a 0 and q is an integer factor of an. And the second thing is that we need the well-known triple angle identity, which is the sine of 3x is equal to 3 times by sine x minus 4 times by sine x to the power of 3. To prove this triple angle identity, we'll use the traditional angle summation formula for sine and cosine, which is sine of x plus y is equal to sine x times by cosine y plus cosine x times by sine of y and cosine x plus y is equal to cosine x times by cosine y minus sine x times by sine y. Then, if we set y is equal to x in these two angle sum formula, we will get the well-known double angle formula for sine and cosine, which we will use later. So first, let's prove the rational root theorem. Since x is a rational root of the given integer polynomial, then let us sub in x is equal to p over q. So we will get that a n times by p over q to the power of n plus a n minus 1 times by p over q to the power of n minus 1 all the way down to a 0 is equal to 0. Now, to clear the denominators, we will multiply the whole equation by q to the power of n. Therefore, this gives us a n times by p to the power of n plus a n minus 1 times by p to the power of n minus 1 times by q all the way down to a 1 times by p q to the power of n minus 1 plus a 0 q to the power of n and the whole thing is equal to 0. So now what we will do is that we will move this term to the right hand side and then we will factor out a factor of p on the left hand side. So this will give us p times by a n times by p to the power of n minus 1 plus a n minus 1 p to the power of n minus 2 times by q plus all the way to a n times by q to the power of n minus 1. And this whole thing is equal to negative a0 q to the power of n. And now we can observe that the left hand side is a multiple of p. So therefore, this means that p divides a0 q to the power of n. But then we know that p and q are relatively prime as stated above. So therefore, p and q to the power of n is also relatively prime. Hence, we have that p must divide a0. By using a similar argument, we can shift the a n term to the other side also, and then we'll factor out a q on the left hand side. So this also produces q times by a n minus 1 p to the power of n minus 1 plus a n minus 2 times p to the power of n minus 2 times by q all the way down to a 0 times by q to the power of n minus 1. And this is equal to negative a n times by p to the power of n. So here q divides the right hand side. Similarly, we have that q divides a n p to the power of n. So q divides a n. Therefore, we have shown that the rational root theorem is true. Now we'll move to the triple angle identity. To show the triple angle identity, we'll use the angle sum formula for sine and I will split 3x into 2x plus x. So we have that sine of 3x is equal to 
final 2x plus x, applying the angle sum formula, we get that a is equal to sine of 2x times by cosine x plus cosine of 2x times by sine x. So now we'll use the double angle formula to get an expression in terms of sine x. So we'll get a is equal to 2 times by sine x times by cosine square x plus 1 minus 2 sine square x times by sine x. Now we can change the cosine square x into 1 minus sine square x. Oh, I forgot an x here. So this is 1 minus sine square x plus we distribute it so we get sine x minus 2 sine of 3x and we can distribute the terms in the first part so this is equal to 2 sine x minus 2 sine x to the power of 3 So therefore, in the end, this simplifies into 3 times sine x minus 4 times by sine of x to the power of 3. And so we have proven the triple angle identity. Now we can proceed to our main problem. You can notice that the reason why we want the triple angle identity is that the triple angle identity enables us to relate the sine of 10 degrees to sine of 30 degrees, which is 1 over 2. And then what's important is that this triple angle identity actually gives us a cubic equation that contains sine of 10 degrees. And maybe somehow we can apply the rational root theorem to produce a result that sine of 10 degrees is an irrational number. So having said that, we shall apply the triple angle identity, which will get that sine of 30 degrees is equal to 3 times by sine of 10 degrees minus 4 times by sine of 10 degrees to the third power. And sine of 30 degrees is 1 half. And let's multiply the whole equation by 2 to carry out the denominator, which you'll get 1 is equal to 6 times by sine of 10 degrees minus 8 times by sine of 10 degrees to the power of 3. We can move things around, so you get that 8 times by sine of 10 degrees to the third power minus 6 times by sine of 10 degrees plus 1 is equal to 0. And now we can actually look at this equation in the form of letting x is equal to 2 times by sine of 10 degrees. So this gives us x cubed minus 3x plus 1 is equal to 0. And now we actually have a polynomial equation where the coefficients are all integers. And so we can say that if sine of 10 degrees were to be a rational number, then x is a rational root of this polynomial equation, right? So therefore, by the rational root theorem, this means that the numerator of x must divide the constant part of the polynomial equation, which is 1. So we can actually say that if x equals to p over q, p divides 1, which means that p is equal to plus minus 1. And similarly, you can also note that q must divide the leading coefficient, which also means q is equal to plus or minus 1. And so therefore, x must be equal to plus or minus 1. But then now, obviously, if you plug in x equals to 1 or x equals to negative 1, you will find out that they are not the solution of the equation. So this leads to a contradiction, which means that x is not a rational number. And why is x again? x is 2 times by sine of 10 degrees, which means this is irrational. And so sine of 10 degrees is also irrational. Therefore, we are done.